Michael Adebolajo is being held on suspicion of the murder of Fusilier Lee Rigby. Huntley's now being held in complete isolation. The risk of his being attacked means... He has Near the River Thames in south-east London lies Britain's most infamous high-security prison. The former London black cab driver has been moved to a cell at Belmarsh High Security Prison. For nearly 30 years, it's locked up the country's most dangerous convict. He was arrested and taken to Belmarsh pending... From the great train robber Ronnie Biggs to Ian Huntley and the Islamic extremist Anjem Chowdhury. But what happens here has remained virtually unknown. Cameras have never been granted full access to this jail until now. I'll be spending six months inside these walls. Right, I offered you your food. Where extremists and crime lords... Bobby Robinson has been sentenced to nine weeks. You called for a demonstration. Why did you do that? Live alongside common criminals. Got put in jail for a crime that I committed. Got to do my time, innit? There's not one prisoner in the country that we won't take. I'll see staff try to cope with its volatile mix of inmates. Get out of my When it goes wrong, it can go very wrong. And witness the realities that prisoners face. Obviously, there's a lot of violence. Just don't be involved in the shit. This is how much. Oh my god, I'm the odd one out here. This is life behind the doors. I feel like this is the end of the world. Of the UK's most notorious jail. There's a hotel, we get zero stars. Welcome. To Belmarsh. Hello, Pinty, all the officer here. This afternoon, can I have one of you to go to the HSU, please? Custodial manager Jamie Scammell is in charge of staff operations in Belmarsh today. And it could be an important shift for him and the prison. Tommy Robinson, the former English Defence League founder, was found in contempt following a two-day hearing at the Old Bailey. Why are being sent to jail for doing what you've just done? Tommy Robinson is due to be sentenced at the Old Bailey this morning. And obviously, being an Old Bailey prisoner, um, he will come to us. I'm not actually meant to be watching telly on duty at all, but obviously with today's events, it's nice to be sort of forewarned. We'll bring you a these sentencing as soon as we know what it is. Robinson's crime was filming defendants at court and broadcasting it on social media. It's just a waiting game now, really. As soon as we get the, the verdict on, on TV, um, I'll speak to the duty governor and we'll just get the ball rolling as to how we're going to manage him when he arrives. He will be arriving at Belmarsh if he's convicted. Half an hour later, and the sentence is in. Tommy Robinson is the most high-profile right-wing supporter in the country right now. And he's just become Belmarsh's problem. Uh, three days ago, he said he feared jail. He feared that it was a death sentence, as he put it. Obviously, we've got a very diverse community of prisoners. Uh, I believe on Friday, we have up to 230 prisoners go to Muslim prayer, so it's quite a high, a high number. There's obviously going to be prisoners that will be offended by his views. It's not going to be an ideal environment. Word that Tommy Robinson is coming is already out on the prison house blocks. Tommy Robinson? Oh, I bet you the shit has hit the fan for him. He's in trouble, he is. People like the Muslims and ethnic minorities ain't going to like him too much. He needs to get what my man got on there. One down the side, that's what he needs. Get it soon, trust me. This inmate is referring to a slashing last month in Belmarsh. The aftermath was caught on an officer's body camera. The victim was a known right-wing supporter said to have defaced the Quran. He had his face cut with a razor blade and boiling water and sugar thrown over his back. With an hour until Robinson arrives, Belmarsh's governor, Rob Davis, and deputy Jenny Louie call an emergency meeting with senior staff. 
Thank you everyone for coming here. Uh, obviously we're going to discuss location and we've got to consider his safety, other safety and staff safety in this. Yeah. So our options are we can put him in the segregation not under punishment, put a TV in there. We can look at healthcare or we could put him on normal location. I think that's probably the worst option we've got. Yeah. Yeah. Segregation. We have got a space but I think we have got quite a few Muslim prisoners down the seg. Quite volatile and vocal at the moment. We have another prisoner who's been targeted by Muslim prisoners before, so I don't know if he'd get the same treatment down there. I would say that that's probably not our option. So the contingency suite, which we could open up and put him in there, has got the facilities. Uh, we can offer a, a bit of a regime. Um, but nothing else, so... I think we're all erring on the contingency suite. Belmarsh has the only contingency suite in the country. Designed to hold high-profile prisoners deemed at risk of suicide or attack by other inmates. So this is held people like uh, Ian Huntley, uh, Mr Warboys and Jim Trow before he's released. So that kind of person that we can't keep anyone else. Doesn't get used very often. This is very, very rare that this be opened. So you just really just make sure it's, it's ready for someone to be located here. The windows are sealed as well, so you can't get around the bars. There's only shower facilities. Again, it's not about the individual, it's about what we need to do to keep prisoners and obviously the person down here safe. And then it's got a visit room. Or to keep them from having access to people that they might be able to influence in some way. And then you've obviously got the exercise yard, which is self-contained. Not very nice, but um, yeah. Can you just give this a quick clean out for us? Yeah. Oh mate, it's uh, Chris here at Belmask. Yeah. Can you get an update on that van from the old baby with uh, young Robinson on, please? Tommy Robinson's real name is Stephen Yaxley Lennon. He may be infamous, but he will be processed through reception like any other prisoner. Stand on that knife for me. Full name? Stephen Yaxley Lennon. Consider yourself to be white and British? Four hundred notes, mate. I'm just going to get quickly wrapped in. There will be people in this prison right now who would really like to get to him. Mm. They'd like to meet with him. I'm sure they would. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But well, not to have a cup of tea. Probably not. No. Robinson will be moved to the contingency suite under special escort to avoid contact with any other prisoner. Arranging his arrival has taken up hours for both senior staff and officers. That's your one, mate. Just jump in there for a minute. Obviously, this is where you'll be for now. Like every prisoner, he's screened by a nurse. This is the one place in Belmarsh where no other prisoners can get to Robinson. But he's not happy. Can he bring them to himself? Prisoners who are preparing the food. No, that's specifically my meal. Tommy Robinson will be isolated here for the next nine weeks. Like every inmate, he will be allowed two visits a month. But he'll also have daily access to his own payphone, which means he can be in regular contact with his family and his network of supporters outside. Now they're saying he'll be treated like any other prisoner, but if anything happens to him here, it will be front page news. Belmarsh serves England and Wales Central Criminal Court, the Old Bailey, meaning its prisoners put it in the media spotlight more than any other UK jail. It's held convicts like black cap rapist John Warboys, hate preacher Abu Hamza, and today arguably the most controversial prisoner in the world, Julian Assange. We will take anyone. We've had war criminals. We've had prisons in here for genocide. There's not one prisoner in the country that we won't take. We've got 17 convicted terrorists, 187 murderers, prisoners that have killed three or four people. Come and be just like a real criminal. Come and be just like a real animal. This ain't a nice place to be, I tell you. This ain't Belmarsh, this is Elmarsh. 
As if this wasn't enough, Belmarsh also acts as a normal prison and has to manage inmates from its catchment area in South East London, many of whom have a history of violence. Right, hands on your head. Prisoners that have assaulted 40, 50 staff and prisoners. Yeah, piece of shit, you know that. 120 officers must oversee 900 inmates across four house blocks. The sharp rise in UK gang crime is reflected in here too, creating serious containment issues for the prison. We've got 68 known street gangs, 148 members, some very violent individuals. <laughs> The volatile mix of people we got here is second to none. So every day we're juggling, trying our best to keep the roof on. Every effort is made to separate rival gang members on the house blocks. But in reception, where prisoners come and go every day, it can be virtually impossible to keep them apart. Excellent. Your date of birth? What's your prison number? Do you know what court are you going to today? Yeah. Really? Love, and you've gone into the sink this afternoon now, OK? He is a conflict war. He's got conflict with absolutely everyone. This is the conflict list. And these are all prisoners that have got conflict with one another. They're from every single house block, one, two, three, and four. So it's very, very difficult to move these prisoners around the jail. It's all gang related from outside, prior to them coming to custody, or someone that they've got conflict with on another house block. Example here, historical conflict from outside. Assaults, assaults, fighting, fighting, historical conflict. The level of violence is increasing. It's just causing concern. Staff safety is obviously at risk. Prisoner safety is at risk as well. It does have the potential to go wrong. We're in a very uh, volatile area at times that these conflicts come out of nowhere. And when it goes wrong, it can go very wrong. High, high profile prisoners. Oh, There's a fight just started. He went to try and come out, didn't come out. It's just so many conflicts. Even if them two, they need moving out. Get him in a single cell. Come in with me in a single cell. Two co defendants have tried to attack another prisoner as the holding room door's been open. It's now been dealt with, but again, it's just another conflict issue that we've now got to deal with to manage those people appropriately. They get that one chance to meet each other um, and, and, and fight and do what they need to do, so it is obviously a bit of a pressure cooker down there at times. And the pressure on Belmarsh is set to rise even further. Before coming to jail, Tommy Robinson called for a protest against his incarceration. Now, his right-hand man has posted a seemingly threatening clip on social media. So Tommy told me specifically he wanted people outside that jail on the Saturday, OK? So that's what's going to happen. I think it's about time we step our game up a little bit. We need to be extremely, extremely disruptive. When it opened in 1991, HMP Belmarsh was the first male prison to be built in London for over a hundred years. A new breed of supermax jail, it was designed to take criminals considered a threat to national security, including IRA terrorists. It had its own guard dog unit and a bomb-proof tunnel linking it to Woodage Crown Court. But one place truly sets Belmarsh apart from other jails. I'm on my way into the most infamous part of Belmarsh, the HSU or High Security Unit. It houses some of the most dangerous prisoners in Britain. Now, no film crew has ever been granted access to it before, um, but I'm on my way in there now. With its own 20-foot high concrete wall and with doors open remotely by central control, this is the only prison within a prison in England and Wales. Another gay. Another. There is. Hello. Hello, I'm Ross. Nice Hi, to meet you. Hi, Helen. Helen Bicker is governor here. Come on through. So this is the HSU. Right now, there are seven prisoners held here. Many are too much of a security risk to film. 
What kind of inmates do you have presently in here? What kind of offences are they committed? We have prisoners in here who are organised crime, prisoners who've um, committed terrorist offences, prisoners committed offences regarding drugs with lots of money involved, which means that they have the, the money and the connections if they wanted to escape. Previous occupants have included Charles Bronson, KGB agents and Al-Qaeda terrorists. No one has ever been allowed to interview an HSU prisoner, until now. This is Muhammad Hafiz. Whilst he might look unassuming, he is in fact the alleged mastermind of a global drug smuggling empire. A millionaire with contacts around the world, he's now one of the highest escape risks in the country. The HSU is a long way from his former life, watching polo and rubbing shoulders with royalty. And the power Hafiz wielded is clear from the name he was given by his associates. Do you know that you have a nickname? Sultan. Sultan, yeah. Where does that come from? Our family are that number one gold and silver dealer in Dubai last 40 years. We have sold 2.5 billion worth of gold and silver for them in Dubai. So you don't think that you should be in the high security unit of Belmont? No, no, I shouldn't be in the prison. Why? I've never been to any jail in my life, sir. I'm 62 years old man. Hafiz is facing extradition to the US, where he could serve up to 30 years in prison if convicted. But whilst here, all inmates are given the chance of rehabilitation, a garden where they can learn to grow their own legal crops. We grow strawberries here. Right. It's so plenty, it goes to waste. Really? Yeah, There's yeah. so much of it? This year, maybe two, three tons of strawberry came down. If you can get hooked with the Tesco, we can supply them from here. But I'm not sure anything, let alone fruit, could get out of this place, given its 96 cameras, reams of razor wire, and three layers of steel mesh for a roof. It even has its own segregation unit, and deep within that lies a place few know exists, and even fewer have been inside. More security. This isn't used very often, um, but we have two special cells in here. My own personal view is I feel like this is the end of the world. This is what's known as the box. It once held one of Lee Rigby's killers. Once you're here, things have got really bad. This is as low as you can go. I think this is a really difficult place to be, yeah. Oh, no bed. No bed, no toilet, no sink, so no access to water. Could you close me in here and just see what it's like? Yeah, sure. HSU feels oppressive to begin with, but this has, um, this has magnified it a hundred times. It's definitely that feeling that you are completely alone. I don't think I could do an hour in here without going around the twist. Beyond the jail within a jail, Belmarsh functions as a normal prison. Inmates here can be unlocked for up to four hours a day to socialise, attend workshops, college and a gym. Charlie Pope is a Belmarsh regular who knows this place like his own backyard. This is one of the offices at the end here that I've known for, for, for a long time, a long, long time. Sat in Gov. You alright? <laughs> Charlie's been here nearly a dozen times. He's now serving 19 months for burglary. Got put in jail for a crime that I committed. And also, obviously I'm here, gotta do my gotta do my time, innit? <laughs> Charlie's 32 and lucky enough to have the full support of his family, including two of his brothers who are also doing time in Belmarsh. With the Pope brothers. From, from Woolwich, South Pope. East 18. Obviously, my name's Louis. SE1, hey. My name's Charlie. And I'm Harvey. Yeah. Everyone knows who we are. Yeah. yeah. 
This is the Pope's home from home. Yes. He's home from home. They come back in, greet us all. Yeah. This is our local. Yeah, this is our local. This is the spot. <laughs> They're characters, bro. They are characters. It's always one of them in here anyway, you know what I mean? Me and my older brother, we yeah. was we was in we yeah. was here with my dad as well. My yeah, dad we was here with my dad and that, yeah. It's probably more that we haven't found yet or not turned 18 yet. You see the same faces every time you come back to prison, it's the same faces. It never changes. Between them, the Popes reckon they've spent nearly 20 years in Belmar. I've been in and out of jail since I was a kid. Been involved around drugs, you know, just basically a criminal. All my money that I lived by is funded by crime. Well, all your money where you live by is funded by crime. Come on, don't say shit like that, bro. It is. No, it's not. Even in jail, bro. Well, well, you get benefits. I get benefits. Well then, so don't talk shit. Well, not, not, all money, not all your money. Not all your money is funded by crime, isn't it? Mm -hmm. My family are really, really important to me, you know, really important. Shall I wrap it up, bro? Anyway, we need to go. To camp. You've got things to do, people to see. It'll only take for one of us to change for all of us to do the same. Because we all follow each other. All of us follow each other. Over half of Britain's criminals re-offend within a year of release. And Belmarsh is desperate to find ways to stop inmates coming back. After much competition, Charlie has won a place on a potentially life-changing project where inmates pitch business ideas to a panel, Dragon's Den style. The winner gets £500 on release to help them start up. This is the room we're going to be going to, the workshop room where we're going to be doing our work this afternoon. I'm here to obviously try and do something with myself because I ain't going to lie, I keep coming back to prison and without me doing something because it's going to be the same story every now and then, you know, so, you know, this is it, isn't it? What else can I do apart from try? And you want to do something that will transform communities. This is the Enterprise Exchange, run by course creator Phil Ashford. People in prison are naturally entrepreneurial, so you link those two things together, give them the skills. We've had people starting restaurants, we've had people now employing 10, 15 people, but it's more than that. It's about building the confidence and building the man. Welcome. Yeah, uh, my name's Charlie. Um, I've only just uh, I thought about what I wanted to say last night. Um, a gardening company for, uh, for ex-prisoners and people that have just come off of hard drugs to keep, they give them something to do, Brilliant. to work in partnership with local councils for the elderly and people that have mental illness. That's fantastic. Brilliant. There ain't never been a programme like this that's been brought into a prison that I've been in before. People on the wing that I know have even said to me, Charlie, you know, if you were to get this, I will be one of your employees. I've had many people say it. I, I grew up in a family with just you know, drugs, so it would, be a, it would be a big change for me, wouldn't it? Like, obviously, a big, big change, you know? I believe it's a really good idea. Plus, I've got a really, really intelligent head, yeah, and I'm really good with my hands, you know? If I put my head to it, I know I can do it. I know I can do it. Whatever your thoughts on rehabilitation, it's clear that courses like this can help bring hope and harmony to Belmarsh. But elsewhere, jail life can be disrupted at any time by forces outside the prison's control. Any demonstration that happens outside the prison put my staff at risk. The staff have to come in on duty, they have to leave. That's not just uniform staff, that's admin staff. And they will have to go through any demonstration. Some of these supporters have got very extreme views. Um, they have shown violence. Some 200 Tommy Robinson supporters are heading for the gates of Belmarsh. I'm reluctant to give a platform to anyone with extreme views but I have to ask Robinson himself why he's called the demo. Thank you, thank you, sir. How are you doing? What? Go sit down. Yeah, go You put out a call on social media for people to demonstrate today outside the prison. Why did you call it? Essentially, I wanted to make sure that I had my rights. I know what 10 weeks of solitary confinement does. It's not good for you. It's not solitary confinement as in terms of the cooler, it's not a box with nothing in it. You've got a TV, you've got a kettle. But also, do you not think, by calling a demonstration that could possibly end in violence, that that's helping your cause? It sends a message to the establishment that 
this doesn't work. What do you think the other inmates are going to feel about you if they can hear people screaming for you to be either let out or freed? Do you not think that's going to provoke some of the inmates? I mean, that's the concern the prison has. You know, staff that would have been off on the weekend are now working. What do you think it's going to do? What they usually hear is Muslims showing about Islam. <laughs> Sorry. Hear the dogs. The dogs are getting excited. You know, you said there was a price on your head. Do you not think that price will go up well, as, a, this result, demonstration? as a result of this demonstration? No, no. Unless I tell them to play a cartoon of Mohammed outside, which I may do if things get worse. Comments like this don't just cause offence, they can stir up trouble too. Last year, Robinson supporters injured over 20 police officers in a demo. The prison fears that protesters could not only turn violent, but even storm the gate. prison has now gone into command mode, which effectively means that the prison freezes itself. As an officer, if you're with inmates or not with inmates, you basically stand in that position. The front door's locked, and all decisions inside the prison all go through the command suite. Good evening. Good evening. What's the situation, gentlemen? Last group of protesters there, they've been letting off pyrotechnics and smoke bombs and they have threatened two members of staff coming yeah. in on duty. Swearing at them, using them. At the moment, there is actually a scuffle between the protesters. Which potentially could be that some people want to escalate it. I've come to the department closest to the demo, the healthcare unit, home to Belmarsh's most vulnerable inmates. Well, it's winding people up, isn't it? EDL motherfuckers, I say this on camera, fuck them, man. You know what I mean? This is this world should be peace or no racist pricks. But wait, but can you see what it says there? Can you Where? see what it says? English Defence League. Nah, I, I didn't write that. I, I guess not. Why why are you angered by that? Why? I'm presence? angry. I don't like racism. This is the 21st century. This is going to be on lockdown. Everybody's going to be on lockdown. Is that going to make you more popular or less popular? Yeah, less popular. The demo is now in danger of inciting violence inside and setting prisoner against prisoner. Despite their best efforts to cause disruption, Tommy Robinson's supporters were eventually cleared by police and a moment of relative calm descends on Belmarsh. For now. But there's one group of inmates here who are a constant threat to the very stability of this jail. Gangs. With nearly 150 gang members, many of them fierce rivals, all jam-packed within these walls, Fights break out here every day, sometimes in the once sacrosanct family visits hall. Whilst controlling gangs means separating them on the house blocks, Belmarsh is pioneering a unique course that radically puts them together in the same room. I come from the same communities you guys have grown up in, you know what I mean? So I was living the life a lot of guys are striving for that's on the streets, getting money, but I was not happy. It's about Michael you know, Bell grew up around street gangs. What's the perks of this lifestyle? Drugs, just easy money, easy fast money. I don't want to be broke, I don't want to come home and have no TV. For the last three years, he and the charity Change, Grow, Live have been getting gang members, some serving 25 years for violent crimes, to open up about what led them to be in Belmarsh. And not necessarily want to sell drugs, I might have to, just to get by. He was caught in a rap race, he didn't know no better fam. Now, yeah. if you didn't slow down and see everything was going on around you, you might not be in a situation you are today. Many here never finish school. 
and this two-week course could be the first positive official recognition they've ever achieved. It's about what you're going to do when you go home, how can you better yourself and then better the people around you. These are individuals who are dangerous. We're talking about gun crime, knife crime, offences that have taken people's lives. There's a number of people who wouldn't want to even be in their company. So I'm not saying that this is a miracle, because it's not. But break down those barriers and you get to know who they are. They want to change. Where are you going to be in this? Someone else hoping to change is Charlie Pope. You're going to need someone to help do your admin that's going to grow the business, get new business in and all that. He's back on the prison business initiative and has just two weeks until pitch day. OK, guys, I'd just like you to share some of your visions. So I'm going to start with this table over here. The main customers will, build, will be the elderly, people with mental health problems and anyone else who needs ex extra help keeping their garden a paradise. Lovely. Fantastic. Well done, Charlie. Without knowing it, you've just done the start of your sales pitch. Meanwhile, Charlie's brother, Arvi, is busy pursuing his own far riskier business deals on House Block 3. But listen, boys, where are we going to get some spice from? Who are we going to go and see him? we fly straight into him, yeah? What, are you getting tennis bit? Get a couple of joints in, boys, isn't it? Might as well. I've seen people get cut open in here, left with like 65 stitches down their face from one side to another. Right. Naughty. It's all over, all over spice. Right. All over spice. Spice is the, the worst drug. But when you're in here, it's the best drug. It's not good, man. I, I do want to stop the drug, but it's hard, isn't it? When you're in an in environment where everyone uses... You right, mate? Yeah, where are you going? Just going to score. <laughs> do you to come with me? Much of the violence across prisons today is down to spice. And despite being a high-security prison, not even Belmarsh can stop it getting in. Known as the zombie drug, this powerful synthetic cannabis can cause hallucinations, heart attacks and violent psychotic behaviour. Don't look good, does he? Isn't that, we've got a nurse. Yeah, nice... What's the name? So, it's a regular vape. Bit of water or something there. It smells of burnt paper. Don't, don't love it too much. Really Seriously. Good. I can actually feel that. No, I know. And I can it's feel it. Money, you, barely even, you barely touched it, though, did you? You barely even touched it. No, I went like that. And yeah. literally, I can feel that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just like a bit. Different. There you go. Couldn't actually speak there. <laughs> It's shocking to think that a tiny piece of paper can have such a disruptive effect both on people's health and prison life. To help stop drugs coming in, every single piece of mail has to be checked, with the help of a £35,000 piece of kit. In terms of being able to detect drugs on paper, it's amazing. This is the swabs we use. That bit there. It is so important to us to reduce the drug level in prison. And then just going in. So it's contaminated with cocaine. And that happens with every single letter? Yes, yes 100%. If drugs are found, the letters are seized. All inmates' posts must be checked for material that's inappropriate or a security risk. And that includes fan mail. That's Mr Assange's mail there. For how long? That's just this last week. That's a week's mail? Well, I have taken two pounds up to him already. He's getting a lot of mail. And whose is this over here? That's um, Mr Robinson's. That's Mr Robinson's? It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Compare that to what our guys in other parts of the prison receive. For like two days, this is house spot one? Yeah. That's, so that's this is all the mail for 200 prisoners. And that's the mail for Tommy for Robinson. Tommy Robinson. But all of it has to be vetted. Everything's read. So this will be what our staff need to be aware of. They're all right-wing organisations or militias. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, what in terms of logos, but we have a team who do. How much resource is this taking away? They take down bags a day down to him. So they're putting a lot of pressure on the staff to satisfy ourselves that there's nothing within that mail of concern and we can get it to him as soon as possible. But you can see the volume is huge. 
So far, Belmarsh has kept Tommy Robinson safe, sound and deprived of publicity. But that's just changed. Tommy Robinson was punched in prison shower by a man aged 70. <laughs> I was only seeing him a couple of days ago. I said he, he's not going to get, he's not going to last long. One of the prison officers asked what's going on, but he said he had slipped and no no official report was made. You're saying all that, I imagine we would have heard about it. I'm surprised we never heard about it. That's because the story's not true. I'm going to talk to you about papers over the weekend. Being beaten up by a 70 year old. Hi. I thought better of you. Yeah, I know. Okay, but. It frustrates me. Come see it. It's on that. No. AP beats up Tommy. Oh, mate, look at the headline. If you act like you're the boss in here, they will take you down. What the fuck? No, it's a 70 year old that took I know. Down. I haven't seen another inmate. I haven't visually looked at anyone. Right, well, it's put my staff at risk, and there could be retribution in the wings where people are thinking if that's happening, we're going to get a bit back. Yeah. Tip for tap, which. It's not good for me. Just as much as you can when you speak to people. I've told everyone, I've yeah. told everyone, I'm sure I've got my first visit tomorrow from um, a friend who will tell people. Sam, thank you very much. Keeping Tommy Robinson alone means Belmarsh can control what happens to him inside. But elsewhere, Prisoners gather every day to exercise and socialise. Just four members of staff rely on the goodwill of over 100 prisoners to keep the peace. But with so many inmates in one place, there's always a chance things can kick off. It's morning exercise on one of the house block yards, and an argument breaks out. Within seconds, it's become a mass brawl. Dog units and officers race in from across the jail. A staff battle to regain control. It's taken 40 staff and four dog units to quell the mass brawl on an exercise yard in Belmarsh. I head to see Charlie Pope, who's accused of being involved in the fight and has now been confined to his cell. And what happened out on that yard, most of the marks wouldn't have even fucking fought back. They would have run to the officers and put their arms up. And we're not that sort of people. Do you think that this will it interfere with you finishing the entrepreneurial course? I don't know. Uh, they, they, if they, they, if really and truly, the officers could, uh, they could escort me down there, you know, because everyone in that program ain't got no issue with you. Mm. And I'm not worried about leaving that door. I am not scared of anyone. Charlie didn't say what the fight was about. It rarely pays to be a grass in Belmarsh. But he must now face a prison adjudication or tribunal to find out if he'll be able to finish the business scheme. Go. He's on the floor there, and there's another one on the floor there. Staff try to get to the bottom of who's involved in the violence. He trips over. He's the one that hits the member of staff and the prisoner. Well, OK. If we've now seen that, he can then be nicked for that separately. Yeah, that is on there. Today, a governor must decide Charlie's fate. If found guilty, he could face extra time, loss of privileges, or even lose his place on the business course. Take seat. Okay, you've been charged with uh, Rule 51, paragraph 4, fights with another person. Do you understand that charge? I ain't done nothing wrong. I've got to, you know, I what have I done wrong? By just defending myself. If the staff couldn't stop the situation, what am I meant to do? Two people to the one. So, okay. it's self-defence, Governor. Okay. Well, the charge is fighting. Well, so from this point, do you take any part in this incident? No. Where? Where am I? Hang on, calm down a bit. What did you see me do, Governor? What, was this your ear and the wall on the wall? Yeah, but am I fighting, though? Well, Where am I start fighting? Down. Right? Just calm down. Well, it's calm winding down. me up, man. If your staff can't stop the situation and people coming at me, what am I meant to do? I am allowed to defend myself. 
If you can make that go slower, with maybe you, you'll be able to see exactly what happened. Have you got any other questions? I don't, Governor, but at this precise time, I'm not guilty, yeah? Okay. Under self-defence. Cheers, Governor, yeah? The case is adjourned. But the evidence is mounting up against Charlie. What's it like if someone says they'll get back to you and they don't? Two days on, the verdict is in. Charlie is found guilty of fighting and the business course continues without him. This is all the work that I've been doing here. Well, this is all the writing I've This afternoon and this morning, I should have went to the business scheme program. Quite upset that I didn't get to go there because I, I was really enjoying the program. So obviously, I've, I've missed out on, a, on, a, on a, it. Could it could have could have been a very big opportunity to change my life. I'm glad, hundred percent. I'm glad. Two weeks ago, some of the men on Michael Bell's gang rehab course would have been sworn enemies. How's everyone doing today, ma'am? Yeah, welcome to, to the last school's graduation. But you know in an saying? effort to change, they've all finished the course together. Big up to everyone for, uh, for being here and big up to everyone involved, man. And, you know, we've got Governor Louie here today. She's come down to give thanks to all of you guys. Can I just make a point? Of course you can. I think people see me as a deputy governor, but in reality, I have a number of different hats I wear. I'm a mother, and I'm a black woman, and I, when I stepped in this room today, I look around the room, and what hurts me is to see how many young black men sit in this room. Michael's taken time to give you that opportunity to be safe in here to talk about what the issues are, but how do you then translate that outside? What we've learned in here has impact. When we go into the community, what we've learned has impact, you know, on your lives and everybody else's lives. Prior to this course, there's a couple faces here. I've seen them on the free flow, <laughs> and I felt like I had to, you know, be on guard, but they're good people, you know, we're all good people. Yeah, man. No doubt. Thank you for partaking in this course, man. It's been, it's been emotional, for sure. For sure. <laughs> If you look around, you see smiles, you see happiness, and that's not something you see often within Belmarsh, and that's the truth, man. So this is, a, this is a special day, it's a special day. I just don't want it to change just for being in here. And I do want to believe that every single one of you will see your next birthday, and the birthday after, and your children's birthdays. That's what's really important to me. Make a difference for our community, that's what I want to see. Whether they're willing to change or not, Belmarsh inevitably leaves its mark on all prisoners. For the last nine weeks, Tommy Robinson has been held in isolation, separated from the rest of the prison population. And today, he's being released. Is this all stuff you got in through the mail? Yeah. Not appropriate. But the next person that comes in here, they probably won't want that. We'll be walking out. Cool. Take your property in a trolley. Don't come back. So happens. It seems right to the last, Robinson is still affecting the prison's regime. He's not going to go by reception. Uh, every prisoner who's discharged at the end of the sentence goes through the reception. Yeah. The reason being? The reason being is I've got other courts, I've got courts going out, I've got transfers going out. I don't want to disrupt that. Mm. Um, so we're going to discharge him directly from here. Tommy leaving today, is that a weight off your shoulders? There'll be someone coming in this afternoon that will put the weight back on. Yeah. So how have, you, how, have you, how have you enjoyed Belmarsh? This has been as best as could possibly be, being locked on my own for months. So I haven't been in Belmarsh, I haven't looked around, I haven't seen an armed prisoner yet. I see Julian Assange through the window. Did you? Yeah, yeah, I just walk around there and hit Julian Assange's windows at the top. Jesus, man, I try and get made around what he's going through. You can't, can you? How are you feeling right now? Right. You seem you seem very emotional. Mm -hmm. It's more, yeah. I'd say that my thing is because I know I'm going home to my kids, and you just want to be normal. 
It seems that nine weeks locked up on your own can have an effect on anyone. Yeah, that's embarrassing. For over two months, Tommy Robinson's presence here has caused disruption on both sides of the wall. But his time here has made me realise what Belmarsh deals with on a daily basis. Everything from high-profile prisoners to petty criminals, terrorists to violent gang members, all crammed under one roof. And I struggle to think of a harder place to live or work in the UK. And while we've seen a lot here, I realise we've only just begun to scratch the surface of HMP Belmarsh. <laughs>